Hello, Schmoville. You guys are going, well, wait a minute. Where's the pit boss? Where's the Makuga? Where's it? Who needs him? We don't need him. It's me. It's myself. We're back to square Square roots? Square roots. I'm JT all of a sudden. Square no, roots. You are actually Christian Harlow. I am Christian Harlow. My name is Mark Ellis, and welcome to the Schmoes No Movie Show. We have a very special guest today. We do. And on a very special day we do. in Schmoville. Yes. And the coolest thing about this is that we get to welcome to Phase 5, yes. one of our all time favorite guests, <laughs> yeah. Mr. Jay Harrington. Hey, ladies and gentlemen. How are you? Thank you. Oh, good. Thank you. Oh, thank you brought thank the you. studio audience. Thank you. Yes, Thank yes. you. Thank you for having me. You are listen. This is a special moment for us for for a lot of different reasons. One, we're going to talk about your brand new show. We're going to talk, and we're going to get into all of it yes. as far as it's coming out. Well, it's this Tuesday, by the way, on USA Benched. Yeah. That's the name of the show. We're going to talk about that. I but, know a little bit about that. I played a lot of high school basketball. Well, <laughs> well no, I was on didn't. the team. You didn't. That's why they called it. That's benched. why they called it benched. But what we wanted to talk to you about was the fact that you were our very first guest on the Toad Hop era. Like, when we were, we were going to have some guests in, because we, we know Jay. We knew Jay from a long time ago playing softball back in the day. That's right, hot corner. Yeah, yeah. And, and you were, that's right. <laughs> you, were, you were the Chris Sabo of yeah. that field. Yeah. yeah, and his Boston Red Sox fan, though. That's right. Uh, but, it, well. I'm sorry, you were the Mike Greenwell? Who was the, who was the third Greenwell? baseman? Wade Boggs. Oh, there you yeah, go. So there well, you go. I, I, I just remember him riding a horse for the Yankees. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's true. Uh, all right, Jay, let's let's get into So last time we talked to you, I mean, we were talking about American Reunion last time. We talked. That's right. Yeah. A um, lot of stuff going on since then, obviously. What's been, uh, what's, so tell us how, what what happened? How'd you get benched? What's benched about? Give us the full breakdown here, brother. So benched is, uh, it's a, a workplace sitcom ensemble uh, show, single camera comedy, okay. um, which came about, it was a, uh, Michaela Watkins and Damon Jones wrote this this pilot, and it was at the time a pilot presentation. Originally written, uh, Michaela had written it for herself okay. as a vehicle, but she then went and got herself a job, so she's on Trophy Wife on ABC, but USA wants to make this. So they get Eliza Coop, who's, she had done Happy Endings, she mm -hmm. was on the Scrubs 2.0, as I refer to it. The, yeah. you know. <laughs> We're very and, familiar with decimals yes. here. Yeah. So uh, she called me and said, you know, we, You've been in for USA for so many things, and you've never gotten any of them. <laughs> but they still like they kind of think you're like, all right. Yeah. No, and the idea was coming in for this uh, for for the show, and I had read it, and I thought this is so good, I could totally see Michaela doing it. But I now that I know Eliza Coop's doing it, yeah, I want in. So come to do a chemistry read with Eliza. Okay. Which is, that's like an audition like in front of a lot of producers and they yes, want to see yeah. how you vibe with this person. Right. Which, you know, chemistry is always a thing. Like, you have great chemistry. How do you do... You know, I think that if you have bad chemistry, mm -hmm. that's that's because you're you're not listening to each other. Right. So but, Christian and I have bad chemistry, right, right. is what you're exactly. saying. I didn't no, even you know you were speaking. Until you said that. <laughs> and there's a give and take, right? Yes. Well, we had it. Um, we have good chemistry. I think I've loved working with her. But I go to this chemistry read for the producers and the executives. Michaela is shooting, so she walks out as I'm walking in. She's like, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Like that? She said, was, good luck. Actually, yeah, I knew her before. We actually went to high school together. Oh, wow. So I was a little nervous to audition in front of a peer and a friend okay. anyway. And the director had done all the first season of Better Off Ted. Oh, right, right, right. Which, Which you're was, fantastic in, by the thank way. You. you got I, rave I, reviews for that show. Yes, yeah. all seven of the people that saw it. This, is it, I mean... I want to go. I want to yeah. get back to mention, but is that, is, how, explain for our audience that's watching. And as far as an actor goes, which is obviously one of the most difficult professions out there. So you have a show that Better Off Ted was a very funny show. You, Portia De Rossi, and you guys, you did have that chemistry, the back yeah. and forth. When you do a show like that, and is, is it because maybe the, the network didn't market it enough? Is it what goes through your head in regards to because you like you just said the s seven people that are watching, obviously yeah. big big. Uh, Let's blame somebody. Why well, isn't Better Off Ted still on the I, air? I'm curious how an actor deals with that, too, is you do this great work. And even Bonnie Somerville, when she was on here, too, mm -hmm. she's done so many different shows. They don't work. And going into it, going into the next show, working in TV, like the process of doing TV, that's that's one of the, the drawbacks? Or, or what, what, what gets yeah, you? Yeah, you know, in terms of blame or why something doesn't work, I don't know that there is. An, it, it's somewhere out there in the universe because I've been a part of shows that were heavily, heavily advertised and it, it was coupling it was in 2004 it yeah. was on the same night as friends because mm -hmm. the last season of friends is going to take over it was basically a bbc version of friends which was then now americanized so it's like yeah, in multiplicity with michael keaton's right. like, it's right. a copy of a copy right. Right. it's not going to be that good but it wasn't bad but it was met with such terrible you know criticism because it was being forced down our throats right that was prom that was on buses there was a billboard in times square i remember yeah didn't help yeah. Although, you know, it, everything's different now. I think the last episode we were on, like 14 million people watched, which doesn't happen anymore. Yeah. But 
Better Off Ted was not promoted, I don't think. It came on mid-season. It came on after Scrubs 2.0, which people had already kind of left that yeah. show, including, my, you know, I was a fan of the show, and it just, after a bunch of years, you kind of, other stuff comes on. Yeah. So, but then we, we got a second season. Yeah. Um, but then wasn't then people didn't really know about it. And what happens now is in the last year even, I just watched all of those episodes. My wife and I, we love it. What, why isn't it on? Yeah. Like, when did you watch it? <laughs> the other day. Right. Well, that's probably why. Right. And, that, and that, well, that's the thing that happens now too, because and I think sometimes networks, just in general, they don't give it enough breathing room because once people because people watch in bulk now. People yeah. watch like, you know just binge watching for, for whether it be Netflix or whatever too. So, and I think that's one of the benefits now being on like a cable show like, like cable Absolutely. network like USA. So. Sorry, getting back to bench. So, you, so you're auditioning. So I'm excited to get for this role because it's sort of not in my wheelhouse. It's it's not it's not the guy who's all, you know, tidy and sharp, clean cut. It's a little bit rough around the edges guy. So I was excited. I walk in. She high fives me. Go be great. And then I walk in, and Eliza's not there because she wasn't even actually told the communication fat no one had said to her come in to read but there was like 10 of us in the room that's so, a big strike yeah. one for chemistry, I mean. right for chemistry. <laughs> I was like, and i got the <laughs> role really it was like I, in she, that in the room had, right there no no like a, a couple hours later i got a call but she had read with other people throughout the week chemistry yeah and then she joked like the only person that i had the most chemistry is the only person I didn't do a chemistry read with. Oh, oh that's great. So you booked a show off a chemistry read with a ghost. That yeah, is the right. camera. No, but that's why it was such a, it kind of felt like, oh, this is happening. It's the yeah. right thing. It's it, I, 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 when I had read it and Michaela the, the, and Damon had written such a funny, well-crafted piece. I want to do it justice. I want it to be fun. Right. And once I saw who they assembled, I'm like, this is going to be. What's so the good. so you you mentioned that the character is a bit different. You say he's a little rough around the edges. What, can you give us kind of more breakdown about, about what he what he's all about? So yeah. Guess, is, is, is so you say chemistry also? Is that because it's coworker? Is it wife? Is it girlfriend? Is it a little? No. Like, you know, it, it, the show takes place in the public defender's office. Her character is a big time corporate attorney at the beginning and has a huge meltdown. And I think why people are going to like the show <laughs> is that we've all had those days. Yeah. And she basically says, minutes ago. F you. <laughs> right. She flips off everybody in the room because she doesn't get the partnership and right. she has this meltdown and she finds out her ex fiance is moving on. And it's something we've all wanted to do and she's breaking stuff and giving you know tears and flipping people off. As she t what, I just do that. It's like the Jerry Maguire moment almost. <laughs> exactly yeah, that. Yeah. You can flip the camera off if you want. Yeah. Feel free. Right. Oh, I like yeah. those people. What do you call them? The, the, the Schmoville? Sh yeah. yeah. What's up, Schmoville? Yeah. So He's she uh, then yeah. cuts you six months later. She's working in the public defender's office where I work. And I could have been probably something great 10 or so years ago, but decided the system's broken. Yeah, uh, I know that feeling. Oh, God, that, I know yeah. that Don't feeling. try. No. <laughs> don't relax. Have just, a drink. She just doesn't care. You're going to be out of here at 5.01. Okay. You know <laughs> Is he but a drinker? He's a drinker. He drinks. Nice. You know, he drinks his, What's his poison? Uh, it's, well, it's, I think it's gin. At okay. the but no, You're trying to rationalize it's your own behavior here now? Yeah, I want to learn about myself. <laughs> but he, you know, he says to her, just... Relax, you know you can't you can't fix it. Just hang out, have fun. Are but, we getting like a Ross and Rachel thing with you? Well, these no, it, it's not driven. The show's not driven by whether or not we're gonna get together. But it's certainly her presence makes my guy kind of okay. Oh, huh, maybe I maybe I could. I don't know, right. shave or something, you know? Maybe okay. I could. Yeah. So she, she encourages him, and she and he kind of gives her the relax a little bit. Yes, got it. Okay. Which is a great dynamic, which yeah. creates chemistry. I think if two actors are you know, paying attention. Yeah. This is all very exciting, and you you seem to be such a cool guy when it comes to handling stuff like this. Do you still get excited? Do you still get juiced? Do you still get nervous when you have a show that's about to debut, and you just, there's no way of telling how it's going to do. It's completely out of your hands at this point. Yeah. Your work's already done. Do you do you even sit and think about it, or do you try to get your mind off it? What are you doing to relax? No, you, you do think about it, and I'm not doing anything to relax. I'm, <laughs> I'm very stressed out. But uh, we're, we're doing some press, and you guys are kind enough to have me on. We're trying to get people to know about it, because I think once they see it, they'll like it. The problem is, you know, back in the old days, and, and you can go back to talking about coupling, you had to go search out what people were saying. Right. You had to get newspapers. <laughs> you had to have your mom send you clippings. Right. <laughs> Nowadays, it's you can't if you if you take your phone out and Google, you know, what are they saying? Yeah. So I'm trying to not pay attention to. It's almost uh, like like ten years ago, you really wanted to see every review, and you couldn't yeah, wait to get your yeah. hands on a newspaper. Now yeah. you can't you you can't get far 
enough away from it because right. everybody has an opinion well, and you get sick of it for what we do now i mean we've we for even doing movie news like if we have a certain like if there's a we have to pick and choose sometimes which stories do is there's certain spoiler stuff that comes out there where they're like i'm a star wars junkie so yeah. on certain star wars stories there's certain things i don't want to know about them and and they and they're they're everywhere and you can't you can't get away from rumors and speculation and if you click on it that will remember it and it will send you more stuff because that <laughs> happens with me with batman. is that what happens yeah yeah, yeah. so oh you're a big batman guy that's right batman. yeah is that okay so so let's let's talk. I want to get back. We'll get back to bench yes. in a second. But you bring up Batman. Let's put too. bench on the bench. Yes, yeah, just yeah. for a second. Just for a second. See what because, I did? Because I want to talk to Jay about some some movie stuff as well too. Because I know you're a big movie guy. And um, so Batman v Superman. Yeah. How are you feeling about this? Well, from what I'm reading, and it's not no spoilers here, but I, I am encouraged to think that it's sort of the Frank Miller Dark Knight Returns yeah. thing. Um, I have seen the photos of, of Affleck. I think he looks amazing. It's a when you now. Yeah. When Dude, he's first huge. heard that news, yeah. Chris and I were, were on different sides of the fence. When we first heard the news, it, it dropped actually uh, the day before we were going live on one of our shows that Ben Affleck was going right. to be Batman. Right. And Christian wasn't that excited about it, and I thought it was a great move. When you first heard the news, what did you think about this guy playing your favorite superhero, and, and has that opinion changed now? My first thought was, I didn't. I didn't know they were auditioning, and I didn't get the. Phone. No, <laughs> you I, would have been a great was, Bruce Wayne. I was very uh, encouraged. I thought it was a great. I'm a huge fan of his. Yeah, oh, you know, it was um, when I originally heard it. It wasn't. It was. I think that right now he's one of our, the best directors out that we have. Um, I just I judged I judged off of previous stuff that he had done in the past and thinking, you know, when it's not his stuff, I don't know how committed he is to it, and then. After seeing Gone Girl, and after even watching him in Argo, and knowing, granted, that was that was a movie that he wrote, and, yeah. uh, or not wrote, but directed, um, that I think his just whole his whole objective his objective has changed, and I think eventually he's going to get his own movie, stand uh, Batman movie, to direct, and that's going to be something special. Yeah. Um, now we're talking about this universe, and you brought up you jokingly about about wanting to be cast. Have you ever gone in on any of these superhero movies, or would you would you want to aim in towards that way, hoping no, maybe I mean, a bench think, throws you that way? Yeah, eventually? right. That would be, I don't think um, I don't think that those are the kind that they have the auditions from two to five at the Warner Brothers lot. I think that they've <laughs> predetermined who is going to. But the idea of of being involved, you know, I, we had a friend that that did a uh, a sizzle reel in Batman stuff, and and I put on a suit and and did a couple minutes, and it was. Putting on a, a cosplay sort of <laughs> expensive one, you know, not yeah. like that you got on Amazon, not the sexy Batman. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, the second I put it on, it was like um, you felt it. Oh, yeah. That, wait, I think Adam might have told yeah, me about this Adam too. Adam was involved too. And my, he, this Adam's my brother. Yeah, sorry, Adam. Adam uh, told me about this, and and it did pretty well too, right? Didn't it? it was, I, you know, it was. Yeah, it was looked. It was yes, I think as far as. Uh, views and stuff. You yeah, got views. Yeah. Uh, now, is it public or is it one of those unlisted links to where it's you send it to people? It's unlisted. I didn't. Oh, okay. I, until right this moment, I didn't. I never said that I was um, doing it. Oh, because of the very reason why you had your reaction to Ben Affleck. I didn't want this guy who had put this guy um, had had put all this effort and heart into it. Yeah. Don't use me. Yeah. <laughs> Doctor Ron from you know American Reunion. Don't do that. Just say it's bad. Do what you're doing because yeah. it's great and. Uh, I don't want it to hurt it. Yeah. And it's certainly I'll, not going to help it. I'll give you some free advice. You know what you should do? Yeah. Batman Playing Batman is going to be tough for you. Okay, It's going to be tough to, to, to nail the role of Bruce Wayne. What you do is you work on a British accent. Because there's always another Alfred yeah. you're going to need. Because Alfred is <laughs> so right. old all the time. Yeah. There's a lot of Alfreds. There's another Alfred coming on another train next yeah. year. So maybe you could be Alfred. That's right. It's something to shoot for. Can you well, do a British accent? Nah, I'll work on it. You work on it? <laughs> I'll work on it. Um, Next yeah, time for phase I, 7, 7.0. Yeah, well, I want to I get back into bench here because uh, one of the th I, I want to learn more about the show from you here. Like, what you can do sometimes on cable, and I don't know if this is necessarily the show, but sometimes you can push the limits in humor um, as far as you know, maybe a little raunchy maybe not what's what's body the parts yeah what's the tone of, of the show is it a little I know I from from the trailer I saw it's it's a comedy obviously yeah um, but where where do we push do we push limits what, what what's kind of a uh, writing we have here yeah no there's I mean I've, I said I drop bombs f bombs and oh there's know, beeping and stuff oh, yeah okay. there's beeping there's blurring um, what has been great about doing a show on, on cable is we do it we shoot it we make it they're happy there's no real um that was good can we get more tone yeah you know <laughs> it's just do, it's can do we have some they more heart in? like it's it, it's they, they they've been given us or they gave us when we shot it i feel like a lot of freedom okay 
and when we would do takes you're not a, they're not going to use all of them but I mean I called Chris Parnell a you know effing dildo hugging <laughs> like or I couldn't believe they'd come up and be like hey let's do an alt can what'd you, you call, say uh, what'd you call him on camera beeping beep and I'm like I don't know can I say that I'm like I'll just try it I mean yeah um, so it it was so much fun the, 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 I think why people will like it is because of that because yeah. it's real life people say stupid stuff so they let you fly off and do improv yes, as well too that's great okay great so that's so if there was a if there's a pitch for so Schmogo right now they're watching and they haven't heard of Benched and they want and, and they're into these comments why should they be watching on Tuesday I mean I'm curious I don't even want to ask that it's like so tell us why should people be watching well, it's got, no, but I really want to know it's got it's, our ringing endorsement yeah, well, that I, should be good enough but I hadn't I hadn't to be honest I hadn't really heard about it until until we were in contact and then I looked up the trailer I thought oh this could be something I definitely could get into because okay. you, know, well, you know yes, I'm a but, fan of yours too and you're a guy so that's yes. what I'm going to turn it right back to you yes, why, why did you respond even in the maybe the short short clip when you first looked at it what was it initially because i said hey look it's jay oh but okay. initially well, initially but then i but then i said okay well, i liked her yes i liked her yeah, i'd say eliza coop is the I reason think, why i responded to the yeah, show like i think her. a yeah. lot of guys specifically will respond to the show because of her yeah she's easy on the eyes and she's <laughs> hilarious well you that was the thing is that for me it's, it's that moment in the trailer where she's talking about uh, when she's in prison she falls over or the jail and she falls over and then she says she's done the bath she, the yeah toilet. and it's that was a little, rough and you can tell there that it's she's got that timing, mm-hmm. um, which which I said okay, uh, the, I, I'm on board. I was I, I was like okay, I don't have to I don't have to fake if I'm talking to Jay here. I'm actually really interested in seeing where the comedy here comes into. You know, yeah. I really want to see how this works out. I got a hidden gem on this show too. Right. I can't wait to reveal it to everybody. It's a it, it's a hilarious comic who overlaps Christian and I's time doing stand up. I used to do we used to do a lot of shows together. Peter Sprite is oh one yeah of the, that's right. Peter, he's that's he's one of the funniest comics that you'll see on stage. He's got such a unique singular style and his character name at least as it's listed on IMDb is perfect for that role yeah. boring Larry yes what can you tell us about working with Peter Sprite so P- Peter had done an episode of Better Off Ted years ago and what yeah, was funny about right. Bench is we shot at the same place so I kind of after for a few days I kind of thought I'd never left you know the difference is I'm not buttoning the jacket I'm sort of walking to set but he had done an episode where he was a test, uh, taste tester <laughs> of, of genetically created beef without cows I think and I'll never forget it. It, it, you're right he is so dry yeah. and so uniquely funny we gave him we gave him the piece and said um, so what do you think um, and his his line was it tastes like despair <laughs> and I'll never forget that delivery and like he's got this sort of childlike yeah, quality does. about him Yeah. so he came on to do some episodes and he basically was almost there for all of them I mean I think they just loved the dynamic that he brought which was yeah. someone off to the side kind of is it kind of like he's off, I out of place he wasn't in the trailer I don't think but or he was it was quick um, is, does he have like a, a Milton type feel from Office Space because it's yeah he, yeah yeah he sort of doesn't belong and yet he's one of the gang um, yeah. there's, a, there's a great line like we're giving her a hard time because she's not part of the gang yeah and she's like I you know I am too and he says well what's the name of my band that's a trick <laughs> question because if you were part of it you know I wasn't in a band and he did all these alts that were like you know what's what's my oh I think the other one was what's the name of my band and she's like you're not in a band and he looked at me and goes maybe she is part of it <laughs> so his his humor was again he, he's sort of like the, the little brother like yeah. alright loved having him there and, and he brings a great quality Maria Bamford another yeah absolutely Community. So they, they seem to go right after the stand-ups, and and they went after a few, uh, like it's so they're really looking for it's not just comedic actors, but they're going more towards stand-ups. Well, I, I think that's the isn't that the crucial element to a show like this too? Is that it has to be a great ensemble. It can't just yes. be two leads that you're looking at like oh I like him, I like her, mm-hmm. and so you tune in every week and you want to see how they interact with these other ancillary players who may or may not only have like one or two lines. Like you need your Newmans right. in shows like this now, and I think that that's something that kind of got lost once you moved from a laugh track based show to single camera based shows which is what the movement has become yeah. that's something I want to ask you too is do you think that it's cyclical as far as comedy on television is there going to be a time again when you need a laugh track when you need something like like Cheers or is that always going to be in the background now because of the way the single camera movement has gone I think the single camera movement uh, is going to be okay and it, and it will eventually be better off without the laugh unless you know you watch Cheers on like me TV I don't know if it's on channel 20 it used to be on Nick and Knight okay the laugh track is it, those people that were in that at Paramount. They were really laughing. They were yeah. really like, laughing. That was funny stuff. Right. When you're watching, um, even now, I mean, last Last Man Standing on you know Tim Allen's show, 
that's his niche. He nails it. He does what he does. Those people that are there because they love him and they're right. laughing. Right. Um, when I got to do a bunch of hot in Cleveland's, they're not faking it. They like it. So when it's when it's earned and real, I think it works. Yeah. I think some of the stuff that's out there that comes and goes pretty quickly. And you can recognize it you if you can. watch enough. If you watch enough, you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I just I've saw heard that. that laugh. Yeah, I just yeah. saw that on a different show. As half an a hour. kid, I would yeah. watch the Cosby Show and been like, man, they're crushing. And then Alf would come on, it's and I'd be like, there's one. just something about these yeah. laughs. Yeah. It's just a little <laughs> off. And mom, I can't put my finger on it. Right. I may only be six years old. That alien, something's not right there. Hey Willie. Hey Willie. <laughs> hey Willie. <laughs> we should do it. You know who he sounds like, by the way. And do you ever, people tell you you sound like Clooney? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, so there goes the Batman thing. Now we come that, back that, to that, it. That was, I'm listening. I'm going, who, uh, it sounds like Clooney. But, you know, you bring you bring up cheer, uh, Cheers, by the way. Is your character, some? you got a Sam Malone type of, type of feel with him, too? Because Sam Malone kind of gave it up and just didn't, wasn't really, didn't want to be part of baseball anymore. Just kind of <laughs> drank and sat yeah. around. I, do, I, I mean, I love, I love that show. I love everything about it. But I would not go as far as to say that I can in any way say that. However, yeah, the character of Phil is a little bit of, um, and, and my, you know, just like Sam and that Diane came along, yeah. and he wanted to get a little, you know, be that's a yeah, that's what I was saying. That's yes, right. a little bit of that. Okay, cool. Um, this is it, a fun conversation. I love talking sit. You don't get to talk about no, sitcoms. No, you don't. Be, well, because it's, the game has changed. Yeah, the way the, the way and, it and, works. And, yeah. and what's weird about the way the game changes is they they always try to find the oh now it's romantic comedies. Yeah, on, on all on TV. We gotta yeah. we gotta do that. Everyone's gonna do that. So yeah. development season because we all have to do something. Whereas I think if it's just a quality, it doesn't have to be about anything. Our show is 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 a it's a it's a, a workplace yeah. I guess comedy, but yeah. it's just a, it's just a show about the people that uh, it's not high high stakes law. It's not some fancy sign on the <laughs> building. It's a it's a. Yes, it's actually coming around at the right time because I, I there's so many new shows. There's it seems like there's a new legal drama every week. It's legal that comes dramas on TV. Or, it's, or it's just dramas or it's or it's or it's graphic through Game of Thrones, Walking Dead. These are the shows right now that people are responding to. And right now, comedies, it's been tough for comedies right yeah. now. There's I mean, Adult Swim does okay and stuff like that. But right now the these type of shows, they're they've been they've been tougher to do. So it would be it's cool. You want those new ones to kind of pop out there and give us something new so we're pulling for it I'm not sure. getting my yucks from Walking Dead or Game of Th- those are great shows <laughs> right. but I'm not laughing and at some point to quote Peter Griffin somebody throw a pie you know, right. I need, yeah. I need, I want to laugh at when I turn on the TV, right. and I, and I'm, I'm kind of tired of having to watch reruns of old shows like the stuff that we're talking about. Yeah. So I think it's time for some new blood to come in, yeah. and I hope it's with this one. Yeah. Okay. Well, so we got, so it's Tuesday night. Yeah. Tuesday uh, night, ten thirty. Ten thirty. Ten thirty gives me gives me uh, hope too. Yeah. Because that to me is like saying no, it's not PG thirteen. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. It's also not up. It's not up. Uh, you know, it's not nine o'clock. It's not. Uh, you know, for baseball fans. Yeah. I've had shows where people are like, oh yeah, no, I didn't watch anything you've done because. The Red Sox were playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's tougher to do. This is a little bit later for my friends and family back in the Get East Coast. Get your TV off! Yeah, but I'm here to watch it at 7.30, which yeah. is good. That's yeah. awesome. Um, well, we don't want to let you go yet because we're talking about some movies, too. Yeah. But make sure that you guys check out Benched Tuesday, 10.30, USA. Don't forget, Jay Harrington, longtime uh, buddy here of Schmoville. So check it out. And then comment. Comment also. Let us know what you think of the show. We want to know. And Jay won't read the comments yet. Yeah, but no, we'll, I, we'll won't. Know. Um, <laughs> I won't. But, uh, His mom might send me the newspaper clipping. Yeah, so that's as close as we'll go. Mail. Uh, so you you you've got you got a lady friend. You go and you, you've been taking her some movies. You go to movies on, you know, by yourself. What, what what's both? Yeah. both. Okay. What what's, what have you seen so far that you like? What's uh, what's um, standing out this we year? We made the mistake of and not not. I mean, this isn't going to sound right. We made the mistake of going to Gone Girl, mm-hmm. comma on Friday night okay. at ten o'clock the weekend it opened. Yeah, now I got a question for oh. you. That's such an odd dynamic because Chris and I saw the screening on a lot. That's where you go if you're a movie watching professional to go see a movie and critique the film, review it. You went to go see it with a girl, with a live human girl, yeah, mind you. Some people do that. They take girls to see movies. It, I, I've read about it. It's, <laughs> no, it's a thing that happens in Narnia, not here on Earth. So right. you, you take this girl and and you guys are together. Does watching this movie, do you have that rush of panic as a dude? Like, we're going to have to talk about this after the movie, what happened, because there's such an amazing amount of twist and turns in that film no I had read the book so I, I knew what was coming um, but no and we were in fact we were sitting so close we were in the first row that we were watching a movie as if we were reading a <laughs> left to right that's an interesting tactic I'm going to use next time I'm sitting in the front is just go I had this vertigo side. Yeah, yeah it was like I walked out for two days I was walking in circles <laughs> but that was the mistake it wasn't going to see the movie but I loved it um, no we didn't have to, I didn't have to explain I mean yeah. you know if I, I that 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 actress, I thought, was so good. Rosamund Pike is going to be nominated for that role because I, I and to be so completely creepy. honest, I've been hard on her in the past because I feel like sometimes she's just acting with her eyes, like in she was in Jack Reacher, and this is her. Reacher, 
I'm, all yes, time. yes. But she's, not, she's, she's, a very, person now. she's very not frightened of everything, and it turns out we know what she should have been frightened of now, and I won't spoil it for you, but she is come on. incredible in this film. She and is. should be nominated. Um, okay, but it's so, not a good first date movie, though, right? Like, <laughs> well, I don't know. Because you've been, you've been with you later. Yeah, you don't want to go because, it's, it, because it shows you how women can put up one thing and even be in a relationship for years, right? right. And then all of a sudden just it turns like that. Right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's scary. Not a, it's not a good advertisement for let's get married. No. No, it's not. That movie. Well, the that, and that's why I brought it before, even with you know with the shows and everything in general. I mean, when Star, when Star Wars, I bring everything back to Star Wars. When Star Wars came out in '77, <laughs> yeah. it the way that movies it was all like you know Chinatown and all these like dark kind of bleak uh, bleak movies, and then that kind of changed the genre around. And right now we're in a bleak period for the majority of even even comic book movies. When you have like the ones people always respond to are the Nolan, the darker yeah. ones, and then you have uh, out right now you have uh, Nightcrawler and um, and Birdman and and Gone Girl and all these like, kind of darker. That's movies. That's because of Star Wars too. It's because it of it? honks like you who say that oh, The Empire Strikes Back was by far the best of it that was. trilogy, and it was, and the, it was darkest. the darkest yes. one. So That's you right. see, like the Avengers Two trailer looks a lot more like The Empire Strikes Back yeah. than it does the happy, fun vibe of Return of the Jedi. Which well, we're gonna miss that. We're gonna come back to it, but that does seem to be the way movies are going right now. That it's a bleaker, darker. More more realistic feel. Yeah. Well, did you like Reacher? Going back to that, Jack Reacher. No, I didn't. See, I liked. I liked the beginning of it. Okay. And then I thought that it kind of lost. Uh, I thought the end just kind of fell apart. I didn't like a lot of his things until I uh, recent things until I saw um, Edge of Tomorrow, which, which I have not seen, and I'm an idiot because I didn't see it in theaters, and then it became you know you know what happens when you don't see something in the first two weeks and then you forget about it, and yeah. then all of a sudden you it's just on get fatigued, and then yeah. you're like, I totally didn't. I, I should have seen that in the theater. Got a great website for you to check out. Um, reviews when they come out to okay. see right away what you should see it's called schmoesno.com there you go see? you check it out right, I gotta write what that down I, I gotta write that down but I, had read, I, I still do read um, Lee Child and I had read probably 12 Reacher books okay so I, I, I love Tom Cruise. I don't think he was. No, so Jack Reacher was originally like 6'5", six, 6'6", five, five, six, six, something like that. Right? Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, a so lot of like, Apple boxes. Right, like Chris Hemsworth or somebody could have played him. <laughs> yes. Or something too. But sorry, to Gone Girl, we, you, you, you dug. Anything else uh, recently? Even even this year that, that really stuck out. What were your favorites so far? That you've seen um, I'm trying to think. See Apes? Oh, yeah. Love that. I love that movie. I love that. Really loved it, you know, a few years ago. Um, Let me get your take on this. So this this performance capture stuff that, that yeah. Andy Serkis is championed and oh, okay. uh, then Toby Kebbell was in it, too. I like where you're going that's, with that's acting, right? I mean, is, Absolutely. That, is that as much of acting? Like, if, it's, if I did a great performance capture role and you did a great role, right, and yeah. we're up against each other for the Oscar, which is not likely to happen, uh. who should win that? Well, I, I mean, I think sir, I think what he did in that movie, if without him, that's not as good. Right. Movie. And even Toby Kebbell, who played Koba. Who played Koba, right. right. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Th They were phenomenal. Yeah. They brought so much. You know, I obviously don't know how much of it was, but their eyes. I mean, so much of... of Feature acting, right. film, it's so close. It's the eyes. I mean, yeah, that's what I'm. That's the point I'm trying to make. Though, is that if you can't tell how much is is the actor and how much is the the special it's effects, the evolution it's of it. harder it's to the give. The, I think that you, going back to baseball, the tie goes to the runner, which in this case would be the guy who's just doing the performance, yeah. as opposed to the person who's doing performance capture. But I thought the guy who was um, Jason. Clark. Clark, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who I love from going back to like Brotherhood. I don't know if you ever watched that. Yeah, show. yeah, right. Ryan Showtime. Yeah, he's great. He was so good in the movie. Yeah, but I don't think he was. And I don't mean to say this, but I was more um, wasn't his captivated. Movie. It by wasn't the humans it. movies. It was right. it was the apes. Right. Yeah. So that to your argument. So I win the Oscar. Is what you're saying? Yeah. You, should. you should. Hell yeah! You hear that, mom? Yeah. yeah. Cut out that press clipping. Um, guys, again, Jay Harrington from Bench. Dude, we're so happy to have you here. Before you go, you know, I mentioned the Clooney thing. What we do last time we had Adam, uh, we had um, Adam Ray on. We did, we do a little thing here with Alf and Gary <coughs> Busey. They welcome people in. I don't know if you've ever have you ever done a George Clooney impression? No. You could probably just say anything. Just say just normal. And uh, Alf and Gary Busey will be along with get with uh, with George Clooney. And we'll set we'll set you up. Set the stage. Yeah. yeah. All right. Where are we? We are going to be at a Highwood party All right. celebrating the premiere of the hit USA show, Bench. Love it. And so we have three celebrities. We have Alf, Gary Busey, and George Clooney. Hey, Gary, who's your buddy you brought to the after party? Oh, I'm not paying attention to after party. I'm eating a shrimp off a baseball bat, and it's delicious. Hey. George, who the hell is this guy? I'm not sure, but you, you, do me a favor there, Gary. Can you pass me that shrimp? Uh, absolutely. I can go up back, start it off the backside of my foot and make sure the moon is purple. Thank you, George. <laughs> hey, I don't want any more shrimp. Are there any cats here? Willie! Uh, George, did you enjoy playing Batman? Uh, I, I did, and I, I, I think I apologize to Adam West for, for, for my performance. Uh, I'm married, fellas. 
Hey, why didn't we get an invite to Italy, this George? Thing, this thing burns. I once married a shark. It didn't turn out the way she wanted it to. I got nothing to say to that, Gary. I love you in Point Break. <laughs> and that's the way we end the show today. Um, you got to come back. Two, two years is you. way too far. Yeah. Uh, you come back, talk movies, we'll talk bench, because we're going to be talking about two, three, four seasons in. It sounds good to me. All right, Thank guys. You, so this is our special episode, once again, of the Schmoes No. Today's about Schmoes No TV show. Yeah. Make sure you guys check out Benched on USA 1030 in the PM. That's going to be 730 for you Pacific Coasters yeah. on Tuesday nights. At Jay Harrington on uh, Twitter? Uh, Jay Harrington 3. At Jay Harrington 3. Yeah, be nice. Do it. Let him know that you heard him on Schmoes. All right, guys. So, as always, come back next week. We'll have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of material for you. Mark Ellis, Christian Arloff, Jay Harrington. Peace out, Mother Fs. <laughs> <laughs>